Hey there, I'm Apple Kreider with Investing Simple. In this video, we're taking an in-depth look at how options trading works on Webull versus Robinhood. These are two of the most popular free trading platforms for beginner investors and advanced investors alike, and they both do offer options trading absolutely for free. So in this video, we're gonna compare their options offerings, see which one is going to appeal to which type of options trader to give you a better feel for which platform might make the most sense for you. So without further ado, let's dive right on into it. So before we talk about Webull options and Robinhood options, I want to give you guys a quick rundown of what options actually are just to make sure that we're actually on the same page here. So an option very simply is a derivative investment. And what that means is that it derives its value from a different investment, in this case, a stock. Okay, so an option is tied to a stock. So you can buy an option on Apple stock. That option that you're buying is tied to Apple stock. If the price of Apple stock goes up, then the value of your option will go up. If the price of Apple stock goes down, then the value of your option will likely go down. Now, some options actually go inversely to different stocks. And we'll We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but just know it's a derivative investment, which means it derives its value from the stock that it is tied to. Now, in addition, you're getting more leverage with a smaller investment and leverage basically means the, uh, the, the oomph that you're getting. So with, with a small movement in the stock price, you could see a large movement in the option price. That's essentially leverage right there. So you're getting access to basically control a larger amount of shares. What I mean by that is every single options contract controls 100 shares of stock. So for example, a call option allows you to purchase, if you buy one call option, that allows you to purchase 100 shares of that particular stock at a particular price. So that's where the leverage comes in, okay? Because it's, it's a one to 100 ratio. So you buy one options contract, that's going to allow you to control 100 shares of stock. So this can both magnify your returns as well as magnify your losses. Because again, like I said, small price movement in the stock could mean a large price swing in the options contract. And that's one of the reasons they're so attractive to investors it's because investors see, oh shoot, like that's that's a huge price swings right there. I could potentially be profiting a lot of money off that, but at the same time, what goes up must come down and there's swings both in the upwards and the downwards direction. So I mentioned call options already, but there's really two main kinds of options that you can invest in. And so let's cover both of those right now. The first of which is a call option. Like I said, a call option basically gives you the option to buy 100 shares of a stock at a future date at a certain price. So for example, say I want to buy an option on Apple stock and my option contract was I could buy 100 shares of Apple stock at $200 per share in three weeks. Okay. So that's my options contract. So anytime between now and three weeks from now, I can exercise that contract. That's what it means. Exercise the contract in order to convert my contract into 100 shares of Apple stock by paying that price of $200 per share. So hopefully that makes sense so far, but with call options, essentially what you're betting on is that the price of the stock will go up because if Apple stock, say Apple stock right now was at $190 and I bought those call options for $200. Well, what I'm hoping is that by the time my options expire, uh, by the time those three weeks are gone, Apple stock is trading well above $200 per share, because if it is, then I can buy Apple stock at $200 per share and then resell it for say it's at 220. Now I can sell it immediately for 220, make that $20 per share profit and multiply that by 100 shares, I've now made $2,000 in the span of three weeks from my options contract. Okay, so that's a call option in a nutshell, you're betting on the stock price to go up. If the stock price goes down, then your options are becoming less and less valuable and might even go to zero. And your options will go to zero if you do not exercise them before the expiration date. Because like I said, those options that I hypothetically bought expired in three weeks. If those three weeks come and go, I don't exercise the contract. It is now worthless and I have $0 to show for it, okay? Because most people end up losing 100% or more of their investment with options. We'll talk about how that or more is possible in a little bit, but that's that's a call option. A put option is kind of the opposite. Okay. It gives you the option to sell 100 shares of a particular stock at a particular price at a particular point in time. So let's, let's say for example, so again, we're going back to Apple stock, say for example, it's trading at $190 per share. I could buy a put option on Apple stock that allowed me to sell Apple stock for $180 per share in three weeks. And so essentially what that would do, what I, I'm betting that the price of Apple stock is going to fall below $180 because say if it, it fell from 190 all the way down to 150, okay? I now have the option to sell Apple stock for 180. Uh, the price is now 150. That's a $30 per share profit that I'm making. Multiply that by 100 shares. I've just made $3,000 in three weeks with options trading, okay? So that's where put options come into play. You're betting that the stock price is going to go down. If it starts going up, then your options become less and less valuable. And again, like I said, if you get to that expiration date and you never exercise them, they do expire worthless and you've got $0 left to show for your contract. Now you can actually combine call and put options together to make some more advanced 
advanced trading strategy. So you've got your yes, your straddles, your iron condors, your iron butterflies, your all your your box spreads. You've got all these different things that you can make out of your call and put options depending on whether you're buying them, whether you're selling them. Both those examples I gave you, we were buying the option, but you can actually also sell the option because someone is selling you that option. So if you uh, want to sell an option, you're basically writing a contract, you're selling it, you're collecting a premium on that because someone's buying that from you. And then you kind of, your situation is kind of the opposite of the buyer situation. So we're not going to dive all into that right now. That's that's a little bit more complex than this video needs to be. But uh, there's, there's your rundown of, of basic options in a nutshell. Now, with options comes significant amounts of risk. Because like I said, most options traders actually lose 100% or more of their investment on every single options trade. Now, sometimes you're going to see people hit it big. That is definitely the minority situation. Most options contracts expire worthless and they never get exercised. So just keep that in mind. And also keep in mind the fact that you do have the potential to lose more than you invest, depending on what particular style of options trading you choose to pursue. But now let's dive into Robinhood options trading and show you what uh, the options trading platform looks like with Robinhood. So with Robinhood, there are no commissions on options trading and no per contract fees. So a lot of uh, commission free brokerages will still charge you per contract fees when you do tr decide to trade options on their platform. So they're not technically free with Robinhood. They do not charge those fees. So you don't have to worry about that. And on the Robinhood platform, there are three different levels of options trading. So uh, a lot of brokerages, pretty much all brokerages are not just going to give options to, to your everyday investor that just walks in the door. Okay. Because they're, they're dangerous. Okay? Like I said, most people lose all their money. You know, most people lose hundred percent of the money in that option because it expires worthless. Uh, some people can even lose more. So uh, brokerages aren't just running around handing these things out. Okay. When you apply for a brokerage account, they're likely going to ask you some questions about your experience with investing, your net worth, your income, things of that nature. Based on the answers to those questions, they're going to assign you a certain level of, of options that you're able to trade with. And so the higher the level, the more risky the options you can get involved with. Robinhood's got three levels. Okay, level one is no options. That's just your stocks, ETFs, crypto, etc. but you're not able to trade options. Level two is going to get you the ability to both buy and sell calls and puts. So we talked about buying a call and buying a put at the beginning of the video, but you're able to buy and sell both of those. But if you're selling a call or a put, it has to be a covered call or a covered put. We're not going to talk too much about what that means, but basically that just means that you have to kind of limit your risks a little bit with those. So you've got buying and selling calls and puts, but they have to be covered if you are selling. So that's level two, level three, you're getting access to spreads, the iron condor and the iron butterfly. Like I said, these are kind of more advanced strategies where you're combining uh, buying and selling different calls and puts uh, in, in different kind of orders. So we're not going to dive too deep into those into this video, but uh, you're getting access to kind of more advanced strategies when you get up to level three. And again, like I said, that totally depends on your experience with trading and uh, your net worth, your income, all of that good stuff. Now, uh, one thing that is not allowed on the Robinhood options platform is box spreads. And these are slightly, slightly, I mean, they're, they're pretty risky uh, kinds of options trading. Okay. Like they would have been looped into the, the level three um, kind of options trading, but uh, you can thank wall street bets. It's, it's this kind of a Reddit forum where uh, people do ridiculous things on Robinhood, uh, but they, someone on, on, on that platform basically ended up taking their account from $5,000 to $60,000. Then they took it all the way down to negative $60,000. And Robinhood wasn't too happy about eating a $60,000 loss on that. So they decided to take box spreads off of their platform, which in all honesty, I mean, you can't really blame them for that one when uh, people were doing that kind of crazy stuff. Additionally, on Robinhood options, you're not able to uh, transact with what are called uncovered calls or uncovered puts. Like I was saying before, you can trade covered calls and covered puts, but you can't do the uncovered ones. If, if you're trading uncovered calls and puts, that's where you have the potential to lose more than your initial investment. And so Robinhood, uh, as a beginner friendly platform, they don't want to give people the opportunity to get in that kind of trouble. So they do not allow those on their particular platform, which limits your potential for loss, like I was saying before, because you are not going to be able to lose more than that initial investment because they're limiting the types of options you can be trading. Now, additionally, uh, if you do sign up for Robinhood using the link below in the description, you can get one free stock, which you could uh, either keep that and, and hold on to it, or you could potentially sell it and uh, invest your proceeds into buying some options contracts on the Robinhood platform. So that's Robinhood options. Now let's talk about Webull options because they are uh, quite a bit different. And so I want to cover kind of the main differences here so that you can really see which one's going to make more sense for you. So 
With Webull Options, same kind of deal with no commissions, no per contract fees. You don't have to worry about any kind of charges like that. Now, you are going to get free real-time data on Webull Options trading, which is a little bit different from Robinhood. So on Robinhood, your price quotations are actually delayed by up to 15 minutes when you are trading on the platform. And that's because it's very expensive for them to provide you with real-time data. They need to have a lot of uh, just data centers and processing power in order to give you real-time data. And so Robinhood chooses not to do that because again, they're a beginner friendly platform and their number one priority is not on traders. So they are not doing that on Robinhood, but on Webull, they're giving you free access to real time data, which is pretty important if you're trying to take advantage of small scale price swings from moment to moment. And on the Webull platform, unlike Robinhood, where you've got three different levels for options trading, Webull has six different levels. Uh, so let's go through each of those six levels right now. And again, they're going to depend on your level of experience with investing, as well as your net worth, your income, and all those other questions that they do ask you when you sign up for an account. Now, level one is going to be selling covered calls and cash secured puts. So this is like the least uh, risky type of uh, options trading that you can do. So you're selling covered calls, selling cash secured puts. Level two is buying calls and puts. So like we talked about in that initial example, and also selling covered puts and protective puts. So uh, we're getting into a little bit riskier of stuff here. We have the potential to lose a little bit more. Level three are credit and debit spreads. And this is exactly where Robinhood stops. Okay. So level three on Webull is, is basically where Robinhood stops with, with their risk. Okay. Because beyond level three on Webull, uh, now you're getting into some pretty risky territory. Okay. So level four is naked puts. Level five is naked calls. So these are, this is the same thing as like an uncovered put or an uncovered call. And this is where you have the potential to start losing some serious money. Level six is writing naked index puts and calls. So this is writing. So this means basically writing naked calls and puts on the uh, on indexes, so like on the S&P 500. And so basically getting some some serious leverage on the S&P 500, either betting for it or against it. But uh, there's a ton of leverage there, a ton of potential for losses. So uh, that you have to have level six access for and you're actually able to apply for an options update on Webull whenever you would like to. So if you are given access to maybe level two, but you want level three, you can apply for an update and they'll basically go through your files and kind of determine, okay, is this person, uh, should we give them an update? Should we get them up to level three, four, five, whatever? Or are we only comfortable giving them access to level two? So again, you can ask those whenever you want. They're not guaranteed to uh, approve you or not, but you'll have to kind of just play that by ear. In all honesty, uh, <laughs> once you start getting over level three, I mean, that stuff is like really, really risky. So I would make sure you're really doing your homework there. And like the stuff that's offered on Robinhood is like what you're going to need for like 99.999% of people. But uh, if you are that, that additional 0.001% that just like needs to like needs to, to do some uncovered calls, uncovered puts, uh, then, then you're going to have to go with Webull because Robinhood does not offer those more risky strategies. You're they're only going to be available to you on Webull. So overall, when we're looking at the differences and like, should I choose Webull? Should I choose Robinhood for options trading? It totally, I mean, in most cases, like I said, Robinhood, you're going to be fine with that. But if you do want those more advanced strategies, then Webull is going to be the spot for you. Additionally, Webull is a platform that is more tailored towards the uh, shorter term trader. So if you do want that access to data and, and do some real technical analysis here before you do any options trading, then Webull is going to be the spot for you to do that. But if you want to learn more about options trading on Webull or Robinhood, we have comprehensive reviews over on our website, investingsimple.com that you can take a look at. The easiest way to find those is to head on over to Google and type in either Webull options review or Robinhood options review, and then click on the link for investingsimple.com. We'll see you over there.